Good morning, Unite Community Church, and welcome. My name is Abby, and I'm your online host for this week. And I wanted to thank you guys all so much for joining us this morning on Mother's Day. We want to celebrate our moms out there today. And by doing that, we put together this little video for you guys to watch, um, celebrating our moms. So check it out. People always want to know why are moms so tired. And if you're not a mom, you're probably looking at us like we're a big bunch of Sallies. Like really, you're tired? You know what I mean? Oh, especially you stay at home moms. All you do is just sit at home. Why are we so tired? We're tired because every single job we attempt to do gets literally sabotaged five times over. So you're doing one job five times. Imagine, just imagine that you're in charge of thinking about all these people that you have to keep alive. Not just keep happy, not just raise to be good humans. Not just give food to, no. but make sure that each one of those bodies doesn't die all day long. All day. Not only that, they have to use their words properly and they have to be functioning humans in this world. You also have to teach them how to walk, how to talk, how to eat, how to look you in the how eye. How to sleep. How to sleep. Did you know you had to teach someone how to sleep? That's one full-time job. Cooking, that is another full-time job. Then there is cleaning. That is a full-time job. You know what we do all day? Everything. And moms, if you're feeling so freaking tired every day, you know what you need to do? I don't know. One day we'll be in retirement. They'll be gone and we'll be relaxed. If you see a tired mom schlepping it down the street, hey mama, you're doing a good job. Mother's Day and moms you guys are the heroes of our world seriously um, so Unite Community Church wanted to do something very special in celebrating you guys so what we have done we have taken a Starbucks gift card and we have loaded it with a ton of money and what we have done is put a code on our Facebook page so that you can use that Starbucks gift card and go treat yourself to some coffee because we were thinking of some way that we could give and celebrate our mothers during this lockdown and the idea that Starbucks is still open thank heaven is a great way that we can treat you guys to some coffee and also if you're not a mom out there this is really cool you can take that code and you can load more money on that gift card so that we can treat more moms to coffee if we want. So um, it's kind of complicated, but all you're gonna have to do is follow the Facebook page, look for the code, and then just use it at whatever Starbucks you go to and coffee is on us, okay? So if you have any questions about it, feel free to comment below. We'll make sure that we can get your moms your free coffee because you deserve it more than anyone, okay? Um, next up, something really fun that we're gonna start doing as a church all together is something called a pre-party, okay? So next week, we're gonna start joining on a Zoom call at 10, 15 a.m., 30 minutes before our actual service starts. We're going to put the link to the Zoom call on our Facebook page so that leaders, group members, and we're inviting you to join on this call so we can kind of 
do some fun trivia games. We can get connected before our actual service starts. So it's a little hangout time, a little pre-party before the service. So I hope you guys can join us next week at 10, 15 a.m. for that pre-party. Now again, if you want more details on the Starbucks gift card or this pre-party, it's really important that you guys download our app, Unite Community Church app. It's really important. It's a great way to stay updated on everything that we're doing and every way that we're trying to give big, okay? So talking about giving big, we're gonna move on to our generosity moment. Now, it's so cool that we're able to still give and still impact our community in huge ways because of you guys. Um, we really encourage you to keep giving because we are doing more than ever right now and we want to continue this, okay? So a great way to give is online at unitecommunitychurch.org or through our app. Two things that you guys have done just this past week. First of all, you've given $900 worth of school supplies to Erickson Elementary families so that they can continue this homeschooling at home. Now I know a pencil's like 25 cents, so $900 worth of supplies, that's a lot, and you guys did that. And that's just the first thing. You guys have given so much that we've also been able to donate $1,000 to the Family Life Center in Ypsilanti Community. What this is, it is a pregnancy crisis center where moms can come and they can have their babies and they can have counseling and things like that. We we're thinking of other ways that we could give big and show generosity during this Mother's Day, and we were like, why don't we support our new mothers and show them how much God loves them? So because of you guys giving, we are able to donate $1,000 to them. And I think that is just so amazing. They need our love more than ever. So please keep giving and thank you so, so much. So moms, we really appreciate you guys. Um, go ahead, sit back, relax, enjoy the service. Tell your kid to go get you a cup of coffee from Starbucks, okay? And enjoy. darkness we were waiting without hope or without light till from heaven you came running there was mercy in your eyes to fulfill the law and prophets to a virgin came the word from a throne of endless glory to a cradle in the dirt Praise forever. 
and I'm alive Because your cross is powerful Because you rose invincible I can get above the floor Um, I know just like Easter, this Mother's Day is a little bit weird. It's a little bit different compared to uh, other years in the past, but here's what I hope. I hope that if you're a mom and you're watching, man, I hope you're having a wonderful day. I hope that what happens in the next few minutes can elevate your day. Um, and kids, kids, okay? If your mom is there, make it special for her right after service, Right after this video, get up, make her breakfast, make her lunch, whatever you're gonna do, but dude, make today special. I know it can be hard for some of us our moms have passed on. I know it can be difficult as some of us can't be with our moms physically. Um, we're quarantined, still in the home order, but here's my hope is that today is a special Mother's Day. 
Um, and so if you're brand new and you're just joining us, welcome to Unite Community Church. My name is Chris Pasek. I love, love, love being the lead pastor of this church. Um, and today we're going to start a brand new sermon series called On Repeat. On Repeat. On Repeat. Okay, bad joke. But the point is, is this series comes from the C.S. Lewis quote. It's one of my favorite quotes of all time where he says this. The real job of every moral teacher is to keep bringing us back to the simple principles that we're so anxious not to see. And so what C.S. Lewis is saying, he's saying that my job, okay, as a leader of this church, is not to blow your mind every week. It's not to twist and turn the Bible and be like, oh, I never saw that before. I've read Jesus walks on the water. I never knew. He actually, you know, like, no, no, no. He's going, look, all of us have this propensity to know the truths of God's word, know the things we should do, but our hearts easily forget the simple truths or the things we know we ought to do. And so in this series, we're going to deal with some familiar stories. We're going to deal with some familiar texts, things that maybe you've heard of in the Bible, even if you didn't come to church, like this is, you're new to this experience. Okay, I promise you have heard some of these stories we're going to talk about, but the purpose and the goal is to bring us back to the easy, the normal, the natural things that we so easily forget. Um, and so this week, week one, we're going to start off, and the big thought or the big idea is we're going to talk about perfection. Now, the reason we're going to talk about this is because it's Mother's Day, okay? And moms, today, it's all about you. So I want to talk to you. I want to talk and open our the Bible and just kind of lean into where you're at because I know, I know that perfection is a struggle. Now, now before we get there, okay, let me kind of back up and let me kind of give tribute to my mom or kind of set up the whole sermon series like this. I was a mama's boy growing up. Okay, you can ask my sister, you can ask my dad, like, like it was, it was like Chris loved being with his mom. In fact, in fact, my sister would always joke and she'd be like, look, Chris gets everything, I get nothing, right? And it's not that it was that true. Well, man, maybe it was true, okay? But it's because I was the mama's boy, right? I loved being with my mom. Um, some of the things I sat back and thought about my childhood and I was like, man, I loved it when my mom, she would just show up to school and she'd just surprise me and take me out to lunch. You know, where, where I was, it just, I loved that. I loved it when my mom would play games with me. Man, I love that. Love the board games, love that she'd play hockey with me, love that. I love that my mom would come to my hockey games. Um, even all the way up through high school, man, I'm telling you, every game, every game, I would step onto the ice, first order of business wasn't to stretch, wasn't to grab a puck and shoot, it was to find mom. Where's mom? Locate mom, and then guess what? When I'd score that goal, who was I looking for? Mom, love mom, love mom. Love that my mom was a picture mom. Okay, now again, this is a little bit of a disconnect, okay? Because our age, everyone's got camera phones and like pictures are just part of life. But I'm talking like flash photography, get out the old brick, like go stand by the mannequin, go get with your sister, go closer, closer. And she'd be shoving us beyond like, you know, there'd be spots blocked off. Don't cross this line. My mind's like, no, lines were meant to be broken. Get across the line, get a picture, get a picture, right? Love that about me and my mom. But one of the things I love most about my mom, as I think through all my childhood, the thing I loved most is when I was a kid and it'd be like the end of the day and I played and played hard. You know what I'm talking about? I played hard and I'd be tired and I would climb up into my mom's arms and I would lay my head on her lap and then my mom would take, just kind of start brushing her fingers through my hair and then I would fall asleep. Man, I love that. Love that part of life. And the other day, I don't know what it was, but I called my mom and I was just like, man, mom, thanks for being my mom. You ever had one of the moments? I remember it was after church. I don't like when we could meet physically, you know, I was driving home, thinking about my mom. And I was like, man, I just got to, my mom's got to know that I'm thankful for her. So I called her. And I'm like, man, mom, thank you for being my mom. Thank you for staying with dad over all the years, staying married. Thank you. Thank you for grazing me, all the craziness, man, then just thank you. And I remember we had this moment where I started to tear up and I'm on the phone and she, you could kind of hear she's sniffling, tearing up and, and she's like, you know what, you know what, son, man, I, thank you, but you know what, I got lucky. She said, I got lucky because if I could go back, man, I would have changed so much. 
I remember I sat there and I was mind blown because for me, I wouldn't change a thing. I want it. Like, I, I know life wasn't perfect. Like, like literally, I remember this one time my mom lost me in a carnival. Okay. Like she says she knows where I was, but I'm telling you, I was lost. You know what? She lost me at a carnival. Okay. Life wasn't perfect. We fought, we yelled, we, we were like every other family. But the bottom line is that, man, I loved being with my mom. But the problem is, okay, lean into this ladies. Okay. Is that there's this idea of this pressure that you have to be perfect and perform for life to work out right. And there's this pressure on you guys all the time, right? There's things like you have to have the Pinterest worthy home, right? That whenever someone comes in, it has to be clean. It has to be spotless, right? You got to keep up with all the different families on Instagram. You know what I'm talking about? Like you got to keep up with the Joneses and then you add kids into the mix, right? Where you got to have the special birthday parties. They got to be themed. Every kid, like they're supposed to buy your kid presents. Well now, guess what? Hello, you buy every kid presents, right? So you got your kids, the perfect party, all that different stuff, right? And then you're still expected to work out five times a day. You're still expected to pump six times a day. And then as your kids get older and you think the pumping's done, then they hit those toddler years when now the pressure is you got to figure out how to shove kale and carrots down their throat. When truth be told, let's be honest, is that it's not so much the kale and carrots life anymore. You know, I mean, your, your kids, my, maybe it's just me, but I, like they're living off of goldfish and Cheetos. You know what I'm talking about? And why is that? Because wherever you're at, this is what I know about mom, is that there's never enough time. Your house is never clean enough. The kids are never doing good enough. You can't ever keep up and you slowly find yourself in a lose, lose situation because even as you try to balance your life, you go, well, maybe I'm gonna stay home with my kids. Here's the problem, is that you have this guilt for not having a career. Well, maybe I'm just gonna go get a career, but then you have this guilt that you're gonna abandon your kids. It is a lose-lose, right, ladies? Happy Mother's Day, you're welcome. But the question I wanna dive into is this, is what do you do, right? Like, in, when you're in this pressure bubble to be perfect and perform all that, what do you do? Maybe you're here and you're not a mom, but you can relate to it like you're a perfectionist at heart. Maybe you're here and you're a husband or a man. You feel like you're failing, like the job's not going well. Maybe your business is failing. What do you do in those moments? What do you do? And here's where I wanted. The big idea I want to talk about is this, is that when it comes to perfection, when it comes to performance, understand this, is that perfection is a person. Like rising up to the occasion, being good enough. Listen to me. It's not found in the house. It's not found in your likes on Facebook. It's not found in your Pinterest photograph. What it's found in is a person. And what's that person's name? His name is Jesus. Perfection is a person. His name is Jesus. And that's where we all go, boo, right? Because we're like, oh my gosh, I already knew that. But that's the point of the series on repeat is to bring you back to the things that our hearts so easily forget because we get so involved in what's going on in our life physically that we miss what God's doing spiritually. Where I want you guys to see this, I want us to revisit something that all of us, all of us, even though you might strive for perfection, we miss the mark so bad physically, but also it stems from it, us missing spiritually, where Romans chapter three says this, and Paul starts to write to you and to I. He's starting to define sin. He's starting to define salvation. And in Romans chapter three, verse 20, he says this, no one will be declared righteous in God's sight by the works of the law. Rather, through the law, we became conscious of our sin. Okay, now let me kind of clear this up a little bit because there's some Bible language inside of here. Let me kind of unpack. Okay, so Paul's talking about the law. Okay, and what that means is that if you have your Bible, you have these two sections of the Bible. Okay, you got the Old Testament and the New Testament. Okay, the, the concept there is that there's an old way to get to God. There's an old way to relate to God. That was the Old Testament. It was a lot of uh, Jewish history, a lot of rules, regulations, but then the New Testament, Jesus came in for a new law, a new covenant, a new way to get to God. It was through Jesus, through faith, through Christ alone, okay? And so what Paul's saying here is he's going that no one, if you're trying to live the perfect life, if you're trying to live with this performance-based life to please God, you will always fall short. And he points back to the law and he goes, look, the Old Testament, the old way of relating to God, the reason Jesus came, 
You needed a new way because the old way wasn't good enough. It didn't work. Where if you kind of come into that, okay, the Old Testament law began with 10 commandments. Okay, we kind of get those. But then from that, they built 613 more commandments, more rules to kind of top off the Big Ten. And the point was, was that those 613 rules were there to safeguard you so that you wouldn't break the Big Ten and ultimately miss God. Does that make sense? Okay, so bottom line is this, is that the 613 laws were really weird. Okay, like I kind of wrote down some of the weirdest ones. Um, Number one was you couldn't drink animal blood. Okay, I think we're all happy about that one. You know, like, okay, got that one, check, got that one, right? Another one is that you're forbidden to eat bats. Okay, again, I think I think all of us are like, you know what? I think I could live with that. That sounds like a good rule, God. Like, let's keep it going. But then, but then, you know what the craziest one was, ladies? You could not wear clothes with mixed materials. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Now, here's what's funny about that is we can go on and on. I mean, there, there's crazy different things. I mean, things that you can't, like guys couldn't shave their heads. You couldn't shave goatees. I mean, there's just so many different things. Okay, but the bottom line is this, is that for the most part, when it comes to some of the weird, obscure, like like 613 laws, we're so far removed from that culture. Most of us are like, you know what? I got that. Which means you could almost go, you know what? I'm a pretty good person. And you are until you just go, okay, forget the Jewish laws, but let's just go to the Big Ten. This is where it all just kind of crumbles, right? Like, and we know the Big Ten, right? Like we know one is thou shalt not lie. Right, we kind of get that, we kind of understand that, and we all know, ladies especially, you've lied. Moms, moms, here's one for you, right? It's like an Easter basket. You're caught with your hand in the Easter basket, you know what I'm talking about? Like you're eating, you're, it doesn't matter if it's your kid's favorite snack, your f- kid's favorite candy, you're eating it, and then the kids come around the corner, hey mom, 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 what are you eating? Nothing, 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 I'm gonna eat nothing, 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 right? Right? Let's be honest. Let's be honest, right? And we kind of joke about those things, but let's just be honest. Like in the world, the corporate world, our husbands, right? What are you looking at? What are you watching? What are you doing with your time? Who are you talking to? Look, we tend to have this self preservation. We lie. Another big one was thou shalt not covet. We've all busted that one, right? Like, think about this. Like, if you've ever been on Instagram or Facebook and they have what you wanted, you know, like the vacation, the shoes, the perfect kids, the perfect house, and you're just like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. They always, you know what I'm talking about? Right, and at that point, here's what Paul's trying to teach us, okay? Lean into this. Is that based on the law, like, like don't worry about the 613. Those are big too. But look at the 10. That didn't work. You couldn't keep it. And I know we push back and we go, well, but hold on. This is just kind of how humans are. This is how we are. Like, come on, Chris. Come on. Come on. Everyone has told a little white lie. Like, I'm not a liar. I've just tried to help and protect people. Like covenant, come on, everyone has, everyone's felt these feelings and that's where Paul's going, yes, you're right. Everyone has felt these feelings and that's why the law doesn't work. So rewind and put this in perspective, ladies. If you're trying to be perfect, you're feeling the pressure, Understand, that pressure is coming from the fact you're trying to live perfect and you can't measure up. None of us can. And that's why when you keep reading with this, it says this, verse 21, but now apart from the law. So if you just say, all right, all right, all right, let's just, let's just assume we broke it. Okay, let's just put it up on a shelf and let's start thinking apart from the law, the righteousness of God has been made known to which the law and the prophets testify. This righteousness is given through the righteousness of God. It's given through what? What have we been talking about? Is it given through perfection? Moms, is it giving, is it, is it, is it given through having the perfect kids with the perfect family, with the perfect grades and the, the perfect food? What's, what's, what's righteousness given by being perfect, living up to a standard? No, it's given through faith. Watch this in Christ Jesus at all to all who believe. There is no difference, watch this, between Jew or Gentile. All have sinned, meaning there's no difference between you and the perfect mom that you compare yourself to. There's no difference between you and whatever you're seeing on Facebook. Look at all, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And all, watch this, all 
are justified freely by his grace. Say that word with me. His what? His grace. Okay, one more time. We do this every week because I know you sit there with your families and you don't repeat it. So we're going to do it one more time. He's given freely by his what? His grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. What that means is it, don't miss this, it doesn't matter how churched you are. It doesn't matter how good of a person you are. It doesn't even matter what kind of family unit you have built as a mother. Here's the bottom line, is that we are saved by grace, through faith, and through faith alone. And I know, I know we push back and we go, I already know that. But it's on repeat. You gotta keep coming back to these things, back to these things, back to these things, because why are they so central? Why do our hearts drift from these truths? It's because we start to take our identity and everything else. When I'm telling you, we need to come back to the simple concepts that we are saved by God's grace through Jesus and perfection is not found in you. It's found when you come to Jesus and he makes you perfect. And what this does, don't miss this, it starts to shift you so that you don't have to look to your performance, but you can look to his. It starts to change you so that you don't have to look to what you've done, but you can look to what he's done on the cross. It changes you where you start to realize life is not about me, but it's about me giving glory to God. And because of that, now, now, once you realize it's based on his performance, not yours, his perfection, not ours. That's the moment that you can truly live and be free as the mom that he created you to be, as the dad that he's created you to be, as a cousin, uncle, brother, sister, friend, employee. Look, when we all come under this thing that we already say we know, but actually believe it, live it, settle in it, I'm telling you, it sets us free to be the person God has called us to be. The problem is, we drift. We just do. We just drift. And so how do we make sure that we stay centered on this? Right, like on repeat, how do we, how do we just repeat, keep coming back to this? Keep coming back to this. Where well, I think it comes down to two things. Two things, and this is specifically for moms, but I'm telling you, like all of us can learn from this. And the first thing is this, is number one, is we have to choose Jesus. Choose Jesus over perfection. Choose Jesus over perfection. And that, notice, notice, I didn't say like, like Jesus over protection. I said, no, no, you got to choose. You have to choose, ladies, what are you going to look to when you're not feeling perfect? What are you going to strive for? And the reason I say this is just a, such a big point is because in scripture, we're, we're introduced to these two women. One is Mary, one is Martha. Okay, maybe again, if you've grown up around church, you kind of know there's Mary and Martha and, and you kind of understand their story a little bit. But if you haven't, let me kind of catch you up to speed is, is essentially Mary and Martha were living together um, and Jesus swings by. Okay, now, now, ladies, okay, like just stop and call time out. And could you imagine like as your house is now, okay, okay, like now, like you're just living your life, doing your thing, and all of a sudden you're Mary, Martha, can I come in? And you're like, oh gosh, who is that? You know, you're probably in your PJs, you know, you got clothes everywhere, kids have messed everything up, you know what I mean? You got things shoved in your closet, and then you like kind of peek, and you're like, oh, it's Jesus! You know what I'm talking about? Like imagine in that moment, Right? Like, I don't know how your home is, but I'm telling you what, look, my wife, especially now, while our kids are home 24 seven and not in school, she'll clean and clean some more and clean some more, clean some more. I'll look up and I'm like, oh baby, the house is so clean. And then I'll like blink. You know, I don't even know what happens. I'll blink and it's like, <laughs> bomb went off. And I'm like, did it, did it, man, did it. Wasn't it today? Was it today? Was it today? I mean, our, our days are getting all confused, you know, but I'm like, wasn't it today that I said the house was beautiful? Like what, what did we do? Right? Well, it's in that moment. Okay. Jesus knocks on a door. Okay. And Mar Martha 
does what most of us would do. She's like, oh my gosh, I got clean. And she just starts going crazy, right? She's doing the dishes, she's putting clothes away, she's probably shoving things in corners, you know? Like if you're anything like my house, we put everything upstairs so our downstairs can look clean, empty, and proper, you know what I'm talking about? Um, but, but Mary, Mary just sits with Jesus. And so in this moment, okay, you got these, these two ladies, okay? And, and, and I, I could imagine, okay, if I'm Martha, I'd be mad. And Martha gets mad. And watch this interaction. I just want you to see this in Luke 10. You don't have to turn there. It'll come up on the screen. But it says this, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Okay, notice the exclamation point. Okay, like, like, like Martha is getting a little bit upset, okay, because she's trying to tidy up the house. She's trying to clean it up. She's trying to be perfect, put on the perfect face, have the perfect life, have the performance for Jesus because Jesus is there. She's entertaining Jesus for Pete's sakes. And so she turns and she's like, okay, okay, someone has to correct Mary. Someone has to tell her what to do. Jesus, Jesus, can you tell my sister, get off her lazy butt, get up and help. We got dishes to do. And what does Jesus say? Martha, Martha, watch this. Martha, Martha, you are worried and upset about many things. Hey, moms, are you worried and upset about many things? You're worried about how your kids are doing because you're homeschooling. You feel like well, you're not doing as much as this family. Hey, moms, are you worried? You worried about many things? But all the different ways you can screw up your family, you screw up your bills, screw up your finances. Listen to me, like, like maybe you're not a mom, but maybe you're worried about many things. What do we do? Watch this. He says this, but few things are needed. Jesus is like, you know, the clean house, the perfect life, all the, all, you, know, just, just, you don't need all that. Or indeed, you know what? You know, it's not even a few things. He goes, or indeed, only one. He goes, Here, here's what you need to do. Here's what I need to do. When we're worried, when we feel overwhelmed, when we feel like we're underperforming, he says this, Mary has chosen what is better and it will not be taken away from her. What does that mean? It means moms, it means you come sit at the feet of Jesus. What was Mary doing? She was at the feet of Jesus. What was Martha doing? She was trying to be perfect. What was Mary doing? She was basking in the presence of God's glory. What was Mary doing? Martha doing? She was trying to actually move and be and up everything so that she could impress Jesus. And Jesus is going, look, you don't need any of that. You just need to come to me. You just need to choose me. You need to be with me because in his presence, scripture says in Psalm 1611, in his presence is fullness of joy and pleasures forevermore. What that means, okay, is that if you feel overwhelmed, what that means, if you feel like you're underperforming, what you need, what I need, if you feel tired, ladies, moms, does anyone feel tired? You're tired, what do you need? What do I need? We need to bask in the presence, in the glory of Jesus and just let him speak into our lives and all of a sudden he's gonna speak truths into our lives that we can't fathom or imagine. What you're gonna learn is that Jesus says that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. Ladies, do you know that? That Jesus says you are fearfully and wonderfully made. So when you look in the mirror and you see all the things you don't like, that your clothes look you, make you look fat, that your life's not really living up to what it's supposed to be, do you realize Jesus is going, no, 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 no. You are made perfect and you are the essence of my beauty. So much so that in Psalms, he says that the King, Jesus, is enthralled with your beauty. When Jesus looks on you ladies, what he sees is the object of his affection, the beauty and all your messiness. And what you need to do is just bask in his presence. Problem ladies, you know what we do? We look to Facebook. We look to Instagram. And maybe it would do us well that in our quiet time when the kids are tucked in bed, the moments where right before you're fading off to sleep, instead of saying, you know, I'm going to put my phone down, plug it in. But what if, what if we put the phones down? What if we got off Facebook? What if we shut the noise up of the world and got the noise of God into our life? What would happen? What would happen if we chose Jesus? We won't worry about perfection. 
We don't worry about that. We would be set free to be confident because our identity would be in him. But ladies, you have to choose. You have to choose. You have to choose Jesus over perfection. Choose Jesus over perfection. And the second thing is this, is that you have to then choose love over performance. Love over performance. And this is huge. This is huge because ladies, here's what I know. Here's what I know is that your past things you've done, it haunts you. It haunts you. And again, I'm not talking about like the big, great mistakes, but I'm just, even the little things like the day to day with your kids, like it's, it's hard to be a mom. You know, like even fun things become bad things really, really quick, right? Like for example, for example, my family um, has been having these unbelievable knee hockey games, uh, knee hockey tournaments in my living room, okay, in the quarantine, okay? One of the things we do, we even made a Stanley Cup. I mean, I mean, we have some knockout, like fist full of passion knee hockey games, okay? And it's, it's me and one kid, Tracy and another kid. Tracy and I, we got to be on each other's team once and we beat the kids five to one so they don't let us play together anymore. Anyway, anyway, point is, point is, is that one day, um, we were playing, right? And Elijah and Jude are going at it, right? And then one thing leads to another and they start play hockey fighting, okay? And so um, um, if you understand having two boys play hockey fighting, becomes real hockey fighting, becomes throwing things. And so it like escalated, things went up. And then before you know it, as they're fighting, as they're going, all of a sudden a stick, I don't know how the stick got involved, it like swung around and bam, smoked mom in the face. Okay, and in that moment, and that a, a switch flipped in my wife. Like you know, you know, Mama Bear. You know, you know what I'm talking about? Like where where it's like <laughs> they're having fun, they're having fun. Wham! She got hit, and she was like, <gasps> bruh, bruh. yeah. I mean, she went ham on the kids. Went upstairs. I mean, it froze me. It froze them. We all froze. You know what I'm talking about? And I'm like, I'm like, oh, oh, boys. And I and, and when I start to giggle, okay, just don't judge me. I I'm like, I'm like, I start to giggle. I'm like, oh boy, oh you 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 done woke Mama Bear up. You woke her, you woke my bear up, you you guys are in trouble. You know, and, and so they're they're feeling bad or whatever. And so I said, all right, well, I'll go upstairs. And I go upstairs and Tracy's crying. And I'm like, baby, is it a stick hit in the face? Like, is you bleeding? You got black eye? You missing a tooth? Like, no, no, she's crying. And in that moment, in all the softness, she's just like, man, I shouldn't have yelled like that. And me, I'm like, they hit you in the face with a hockey stick. You didn't yell enough, you know? Like, if it was me, wham! I mean, you know, dad's jumping in, you know? Um, but the, here's the deal, here's the deal. Isn't that the difference between moms and dads? It's like, mom, there's like this nurturingness about you. There's this softness. There's a sensitivity. You know and lean into what kids need, what, what your family needs. There's this sensitivity to a parent uh, that's specific to a mom. And that's where moms, here's what I can tell you. One of the best things you can do so once you start to carve out your time to just be with Jesus, the second thing you need to choose is above all things love. And the reason why is because 1 Peter 4, 8 says this, above all. Okay, so above everything. Okay, our call, our duty, what Peter is talking to you and to me, and this is a guy that lived with Jesus three and a half years. A guy that was anointed with the Holy Spirit. He's penning scripture. He's going, look, above all things, above everything else. Watch this. Love each other deeply when it comes to our human relationships on this earth. He's going, love each other deeply because love covers over a multitude of sins. And why does this matter so much? Because moms, you're not perfect. You never will be perfect, yet you live with this pressure of performance and perfection and what you can do to get out of that. When you do fail, when you do mess up, and you will, those days will come. The best thing you can do is above all else, all else, just love. Bask your family in love. Bathe them in it. Wash them in it. When you feel not loving, love more. Love harder. Love deeply. Love, love, love. Because one, it never fails. But two, it covers, covers the multitude of sins. Where again, come back to my mom. Again, want to know why I have such high respect for my mom? It's not because she was perfect. My gosh, she lost me at a carnival. Okay, my dad was there too, so it's just as much hips as all, okay? But I'm telling you, my mom fight, me and my mom fought. Man, did we have knockdown, down, drop out, screaming matches. But I'm telling you what, the reason I am who I am today is because my mom, above all things, she 
loved. And it wasn't just me, man. She loved God. Loved God. I remember waking up every morning. Every morning. You know what my mom did every morning? She'd be there with her Bible open, reading, basking, loving God. And she loved her family. Want to know what, when, when, my, when her mom, my grandma, I had to go to a nursing home, broke my mom's heart. My grandma was so stubborn, she'd never move in with her kid. So you know what my mom did? Every day, every day, every day, because of the love she had for her family, every day, she would go to work and after work, she would spend every day, every day, all the way in the evening with her mom in a nursing home because she refused to let her mom be alone. Every day, every day she was with my mom. What my mom did, she loved us. She went to work for us. I remember she'd work afternoon jobs, all of a sudden she was a waitress and then she went back to school. When I was 10 years old, got a nursing degree. Okay, she rose above it. She took it. Now she's an RN. Now she's graduated. I'm telling you, my mom loved, 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 loved. She loved, she loved, she loved more. She still loves, she still loves to this day. Love is what it took. And I'm telling you, it's not because she was perfect. And through all the fighting, through all the things I'm sure she wishes would have been different. I'm sure through all the things that Satan plagues her with to go, oh, you should have said something different. You should have done something different. This should have been different. Here's my perspective as her son. She was perfect. Not in a worldly sense. But she reached perfection because she learned how to love. Because love covers the multitude don't miss that, ladies, the multitude of sins. It's not just one sin. It's when you look back and go, man, and all the things I've done, like maybe you're here and you're mom, and maybe your kids are just flying out of control right now, and you're going, man, I, 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 am, I am messing them up. Maybe you're here and, and you've just been nasty to your husband and you just go man my kids are watching us fight and just just being my, me, the husband and wife man it's, it's just not going well maybe you're here and you're a single mom and you fear for your kid you go man my kid gonna be okay but you, you, maybe you're here and, and you've been divorced and it was your fault, you know, like you, you did it, but then you, you got right with Jesus, you remarried, and now you're living in this, in a blended family, and, and you're worried about your kids, and then their kids, and, and just, is this, is this, 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 this wasn't God's plan, but it, it's God's plan now, and I don't, I, how do I, and you're trying to reconcile, go, how, how's this all going to fit together, or maybe, maybe you're a little older as a mom, and you watch your kids, and they're not in church, Maybe some don't believe in God anymore. You might even be here and be a grandparent to a grandkid and you don't even know who your grandkid dad is and you blame yourself and you go, man, what do we do now? What do we do? We love. You know what you do with that little grandkid is you love that grandkid. You love that grandkid. You know what you do with your kids? You love them. You love them. You pour out this outlandish love on them. What you do, what I do, I'm telling you, our goal, our purpose, how you reach perfection is not through performance, but it's through a person. It's through Jesus. It's you and I choosing to, you know what? I'm going to bask in Jesus, know who he is. I'm going to sit at his feet like Mary. And then once you get calm, once you find peace, once you find your identity in Christ, then you choose to go love. And you let love conquer all. And you let love win. Let's pray. Jesus, God, I know that a message like this hits home on a lot of levels. Um, for one, there might be gratitude. Um, God, as we look at our relationships with our moms and go, man, I, that, that was great. Maybe there's moms here that are proud of their relationship with their kids. God, there's gratitude. And so, God, for that, we thank you. We thank you. But, God, I want to pray specifically for the moms this morning that they will know, God, you never expect perfection out of them. And that's the purpose of the cross. That's the purpose of you, Jesus, is that you lived the perfect life. You took it all. You took all the sin on of the world and in your great love, you and your love covered the multitude of sins. 
And so God, as we move forward, God, let there be two things true of the moms in this church. Number one is that we choose Jesus. We choose you, Jesus. We rest in you. We find our identity in you. We listen to you, God. Let our our moms, our women, not be driven by Facebook, driven by Pinterest, driven by the things of this world, but God, let them rise above it. Let them bask in your presence because only one thing, one thing is needed, God, for them to sit with you. You give peace. You give rest. You give joy and you give pleasures if we rest in you. And then secondly, I pray for the parents, specifically the moms on Mother's Day, that they would love their kids and love them more and love them more and love them more. Just like you relentlessly love us, that while we were yet sinners, Christ, you died for us. For we have all fallen short of the glory of God. But through faith and grace and your love, we're made whole with you. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Before we go, I always want to kind of give this moment where maybe you're hearing your mom and you're relating to this. And you need the next step. Here's what I want to kind of add for you. Okay, so number one, if you want to receive Christ, listen to me, today's your day. Like almost every single week, people have committed to go, you know what, I'm, 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 gonna, I'm signing up, I'm going all in. Maybe you're here and you're watching as a mom and you're going, man, I, I'm not perfect and I, I just need forgiveness. Listen to me. Here's what I want for you. I want you to download our app, hit the I've Decided button, and then we're going to have a pastor call you this week and kind of lead you into what your next steps are. Okay, so I want you to make that a decision today. Okay, secondly, if you're a mom and you're just going, man, I just, I just need some help. Maybe you just need some one-on-one, maybe, whatever that is. Here's what I want. The same for you. Same for you. I just want you to hit the I've Decided button. Okay, and what that means is that I've decided to follow Jesus. I'm going to sit at Jesus. I just need some help. And whatever it is, we're going to call you as pastors today or this week, and we're going to make sure that you're cared for and you're comforted and that you have help taking your next steps with God. All right, I love you guys. Man, let's worship to this one last song.
تو Our affection, our devotion Poured out on the feet of Jesus Our affection, our devotion forget to treat your mom to some Starbucks coffee with our Starbucks gift card code and also we're doing that pre-party at 10 15 a.m. next week so don't forget to hop on our zoom call all right we'll see you guys next week <laughs>